Hey, Miles here, milesbecker.com. In this video, you're gonna learn exactly how to overcome imposter syndrome. Specifically, you're gonna learn the five keys that I've used in my life to overcome this myself. Because if you're moving your life in a direction of doing something that you've never done before, that none of your friends, your family members, or your coworkers have ever done before, odds are you're gonna meet resistance along this path. And it's gonna come in a couple of ways. Number one is external resistance from these individuals I mentioned, right? When you're surrounded by people who are striving for mediocrity in their life and you're shooting for excellence, there's a lot of people that are gonna think, you know, oh, don't you want to be safe or ooh, that stuff's risky or my uncle Charlie tried the internet stuff, man, that stuff don't work. That's everyone on there is a scam. So there's this external form of resistance that you're going to have to deal with. But then there's the internal form of resistance, that internal conversation we have with our ego that's going to ask very rude oftentimes questions, at least for me, like, who do you think you are or you're not enough? And I'm here to tell you, you are enough. And when you reframe your mindset based on these five specific principles, you'll be able to blaze forward on your path confidently, knowing that this is totally normal, right? Everyone who has created amazing things out of nothing and they had no clue how they were going to do it, they all deal with this at some point in their process. So if you're feeling it, that just means you're on the path. Let's jump into the actual five steps. Number one is stay focused on who you are becoming. Okay. There's this whole like fake it till you make it thing. And I don't buy into that. I think it's a bunch of baloney, but I want to ask you, who are you becoming? When I started making my videos, I started making them out of a frustration that I noticed a lot of people teaching on YouTube about digital marketing. They weren't teaching at all. They were just trying to sell their overpriced courses. I bought into a couple of courses and they were terrible. And I was like, I know more than these dudes charging thousands. And I was like, F it. I'm gonna just make the videos myself, okay? So in that moment, I committed to becoming the most helpful internet marketer online, period. I'm the most helpful marketer in the world. I've kind of refined that down and I stay focused on this. Here's what people can't do. No one can take that away from me because I can show up every single day and answer questions every single day. I could build forums where I'm there every single day answering questions every single day. I could email my list every, I can outwork everyone. Sure, there's gonna be marketers who might make more than me. There's gonna be marketers who might be better at the game than me, but I can control how much value I'm giving to the marketplace. I went all in on that and that helped me reframe my mindset of I'm not trying to be the fan, Mr. Fancy Guru on a hill. I'm a normal person who's committed his life to being more helpful. I'm becoming the most helpful marketer in the world. So who are you becoming? And realize that it's a journey from where you are right now today to where you want to be. And that journey is the process of becoming. So you're not necessarily trying to be the be all end all today. You're in the process of becoming that. And what would that person do for me as the most helpful marketer in the world? What would I do? Well, it started with 120 videos in 120 days. I'm still working my tail off right? I'm still doing Sundays, work 12 hours yesterday, Saturday, work 12 hours Saturday. I still work seven days a week, every week. Why? Because I'm passionately driven by this goal to be the most helpful marketer in the world. That's what pushes me. So I stay focused all day, every day on what would that person do? Okay. So who are you becoming and what would that person do? And then do those actions. Now you'll get better at it. I got better at making videos. I got better at teaching. Everything has fallen into place because I stayed focused on who I am becoming. So Get focused on who you are becoming, and that's key number one. Number two, realize that successful people fail more than unsuccessful people, right? Unsuccessful people will get a job and they'll work at the same job for 30 years and they won't think much about what they're doing and they ain't gonna stray out of that little box that they're in and they ain't gonna try nothing new and they have zero chance for eliminating that income ceiling. They have zero chance for making millions of dollars a year. Maybe there's a 0.00001% chance they might make millions of dollars a year working that employee mindset. But when you step out of that box and decide that you're gonna be an entrepreneur or that you're gonna make something amazing out of your life, this means you're gonna have to try a lot of things that don't work. And my teammates would tell you, and I guarantee if, if they're watching right now, they're gonna laugh about this. I have sent my team on missions to go build things, to go create things, to set up websites, to set up content that we never publish. We threw it all away. I am constantly taking shots, right? Like if you think Babe Ruth, one of the best home run hitters of all times, he also had more strikeouts than just about anybody at all times. There's so many quotes in the world of sports. This is so relevant to the world of sports, right? You miss 100% of the shots that you never take, but we as entrepreneurs and we as people building things, we take shot after shot after shot. And the truth is we fail more than most normal people. But what you're doing is out of these, you're looking for the things that work. So my wife and my business, the it's been running for 10 years, it's made millions of dollars, it's extremely successful, it's reached tens upon tens upon tens of millions of people, maybe over 100 million people, her meditation has been downloaded millions of times, okay, so we've done some big things, 
In the beginning, we didn't know what we were doing. We were trying all kinds of stuff. We did a little bit of this. We tried some Kindle books. We did a little bit of that. We blogged. We spent three or four years doing lots of different things, trying lots of different things. And over time, we noticed these three or four things really worked well. So what have we done since that point? We've just kept doing what worked well. So it takes a lot more failure and a lot more kind of uh, tried attempts in the beginning and you're observing what works. You're looking for the spikes in the data. You're looking for the videos that just pop on YouTube. You're looking for those podcasts that just get downloaded over and over. You're looking for those things that you offer that get lots of clicks and lots of sales. You're looking for the email headlines or email subject lines that get lots of opens. You're looking for spikes in the data and these are your clues of what works. So we gotta try lots of different things and then you observe what starts to work work really well. And then you got to think about it. Okay. Why did that work? Hmm, okay. How about that? And then you go do more things similar to that. And eventually you'll find one or two things that work. And here's the key do what works over and over and over. A lot of times entrepreneurs just love building and we love creating new things and we're addicted to new when really being successful online is a lot about doing the same thing over and over and over, just a little more meticulously, little bits of testing is all my wife and I do now. Her core business model has not changed in over five years. We're doing the same thing today that we were. Remember, it took hundreds if not thousands of failed attempts to find those ones that actually work for us. And then we just keep doing what works over and over and over uh, on my channel here, YouTube videos, right? So you notice I got a pretty big library of Facebook advertising videos. Why? Well, I was doing all my videos in the first 120 days when I did 120 videos and I noticed my first Facebook ad video just popped. I didn't do it till about month three and it just popped, it had way more views than most of my other videos at that point. And I was like, okay, so YouTube and the world of individuals like you on YouTube wants more about Facebook. Let me do another video. Well, that one worked too. Let me do another video. All of a sudden I did like 30 videos on that one topic, all from different angles and different bits and pieces of the process. So that's what, what I mean by look for those spikes and then follow through and do more of what works on those we as entrepreneurs by definition take more shots than people who just drive to a cubicle and do, work a job they hate all day every day so that means we are for sure we're going to fail more often but we're going to find those one or two things that work and we're going to stick with it over time number three realize at a deep level that honesty and authenticity build trust and trust builds businesses this is big time key right the goal for me specifically i never want to be the guru on the hill sitting in front of a three hundred thousand four hundred thousand dollar fancy car in front of a two million dollar mansion trying to flex on you be like oh yeah look how good i am i'm so cool you could be as cool. no never do i want to be that guy because that eliminates the relatability right i'm a normal dude i share my challenges via email i share my challenges via videos like this because like I'm a normal person. This is real. And when I'm authentic like that, a connection happens that doesn't happen with the guru, right? So I heard a story in a great audiobook, uh, Prosperity Consciousness by Frederick Lehrman. You can get it on Audible for one credit. Um, it's really, really quite good. And he was talking about, uh, he was teaching guitar at one point and he wasn't very good at guitar. He was only like two steps ahead of his students and his students were so motivated to try to catch him because they looked at what he was doing. They're like, man, you're not that much farther ahead than I am. Versus what if the greatest guitar player in the world was teaching some kid down the block how to play guitar and this guitar player can just riff and just rip it. And the kid's going to look at me like I could never do that. Right? It's like trying to learn how to play ball with, with Michael Jordan. You'd be like, man, I could never do that. But when you're learning with that person from the block, from the neighborhood, who's just a few steps beyond where you are, there's this extra motivation to go. And that's why I start new things like my affiliate marketing case study from zero that has still made zero sales in five months of building it out. That's the process. I want to be real. I'm not trying to convince you that magic is going to happen if you follow my system. I'm trying to tell you this is the real process. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be 100% transparent and honest with you. And I'll show you the path because eventually that site is going to be cranking out the $3,000 per month. It's not a question of if, it's when. And I'm just going to document the whole process. Specifically when I'm like, man, we're in the messy middle. Most people will quit right now. This is a big time challenge. My team is freaking out over these. That's just the way it is. And when you know that's the truth, you're going to be more willing to push through, which is what you need to do to get you where I want you to go, which is to be a successful entrepreneur. But you need to flip that idea out to your audience, right? Who are you becoming and what do they need to know? If you're teaching um, personal trainers how to build personal training businesses, man, that is an up and down rough thing. You got personal trainers, they wanna work in gym, they wanna work with physical people. Now they gotta do web stuff and maybe they don't wanna deal with tech, they don't love the tech headaches. You 
need to be honest about this kind of stuff. And when you are, when you're honest and authentic about the path and the challenges and the struggles, they're going to connect with you more than the person who's just flexing, trying to act like a big boss. And oh, I could teach you how to be a boss too, where they want, we want authenticity in this day and age. We all just realize the world's fake. There's so many fake people out there. We want real people. And what do real people do? They wear their hearts on their sleeves. They're honest. They're authentic. So as you continue on this path of becoming that which you are committed to becoming, when you share those failures that happen because successful people fail more than they try, you're being honest and authentic, and that's actually going to make you more relatable, which ultimately is good for business. It's a little counterintuitive, but it's 100% true, and that's why this channel is growing and exploding like it is. Numero quattro, that's number four for the English-speaking community, uh, subconscious reprogramming. Now, there's this theory of epigenetics that our subconscious minds were programmed by the age of six, okay? So whatever your environment was, the people who raised you, essentially up to about kindergarten, right? Give or take the years of kindergarten. So all those early formative years, we don't have beliefs installed yet. And we pick up our beliefs from those people we surround ourselves with. Generally speaking, it's our parents, right? So whatever our parents thought, like uh, money doesn't grow on trees and we can't afford that and, and rich people are evil and wrong and, and the man is holding me down, which is that is everything that got added to my brain. Uh, that's pretty much the programming that was installed by age six. And I ran with that programming until I was about 30. We can reprogram our subconscious mind. So our conscious mind does the thinking, but the subconscious mind is behind the strings. That's the operating system. And that's actually what is pulling the strings and making us do what we do, right? We are repeat reacting to kind of those subconscious programming. So you, we got to learn how to reprogram our subconscious mind. Uh, for me, meditations, meditations with affirmations. I listen to hours and hours and hours of these things to fill my mind because repetition is what programs our mind. And at this age, we have beliefs that we have to break down before we can install new ones. When we were younger, they just, boop, they came right in like, oh, money doesn't grow on trees. Yep. You know what? It doesn't. You're right, Dad. We can't afford that. Well, you know what? You're right, Dad. We can't afford that. And all of a sudden that stuck around. So I've made a meditation for you. It's here on YouTube. It used to be for a download. I'll we'll put a link down below. I'll have the link pop up above. Listen to it every day, right? You can get it on my podcast feed as well. Just search for Miles Becker on the podcast, uh, Miles Becker Meditation, and you should be able to download it right to your phone on the podcast. Listen to it every day when you're out walking the dog, when you're at the gym. Listen to that. Number two on that topic is a book called The Untethered Soul. And I think this book does a fantastic job about talking about that internal conversation we all have with the ego mind, right? He calls it the roommate. And we all got to deal with the roommate. And our roommate is going to try to keep us locked in those old patterns based on that subconscious programming. So we need to kind of play at this on two levels. Number one, we need to fill our mindset with empowering thoughts. Yes, I can do this. I've got this. I am abundant. I'm good. I'm taken care of. I can do this. I am successful. Those things need to get programmed in. That's what my meditation meditation will do. And then we need to check that, that, voice in our head that's like, no, you aren't. Uh-uh. No, you're dumb. I saw you try that. No, that no, you aren't. Nope, you're not that either. Right? We all have this kind of rude ego mind in there. Uh, so the book is called The Untethered Soul. It's a brilliant book. I listen to it on Audible because I prefer to listen to books. Um, I get through them faster that way. And then my meditation. So that's number four. Number five is go all in on creating for your audience. Okay. Um, we got to get the focus off of you. So many people are just sitting there thinking about me. What can I get? How can I get it? Maybe I could try this and I can get it this way. Maybe I could try that and I can get it this way. Oh, no, you can't. No, you're not good enough. This is the problem, right? So when I stopped thinking about this guy and I started thinking about you, and literally, I can't even tell you, all day, every day, I think about you. I'm like, what can I create for you? I woke up this morning, first thing, jumped in the shower, like 6.15 this morning, I'm at my desk here, like, what am I gonna create for you today? What can I put out for you today to help you kind of break through and hit that next level? Because I'm here for you, I really am here for you. This is a part of me becoming the most helpful marketer in the world. And I came up with this idea, it's like, okay, I can go with that. What am I gonna email today? What am I gonna share with my members in my inner circle inside of the forums today? What am I gonna do today on social that's gonna move this, how am I going to give all day, every day is my main thought. And something amazing happens when we focus on giving. We seem to get what we need if we help enough people get what they want. You know, there's that old Zig Ziglar quote, if you help enough people get what they want, you could have anything you want in this world. And so many people are just all so focused on me, me, me. What am I going to get? How can I get mine? How can I get out of this situation? How can I get out from underneath this rock? And when you shift that to how can I give, what do I have inside of me that I can give to the world? And how do I just turn this on and just start sharing this in ways? And how can I be more helpful? How can I be more friendly? Whatever that becoming is, right? If you're 
becoming the best artist in the world and you want to become the best MC ever, are you putting out a track a day? No, nope. track a week? No, nope. like that's what the best MC in the world would do. They'd be grinding it out. They'd be putting out more content than anyone else. And they wouldn't even look at the reviews. You want to be an author? You want to be an artist? Well, you, are you doing the work? And when you do that work, it needs to be for them, not you. And that's a small perspective shift. But once you make that shift, my life is no longer about me and I'm good. I got all, I got houses, plural, right? I got 20 plus acres with a lake house that I visit when the weather's perfect. I'm about to get me a condo in the tropics because I don't really like winter anymore. And that all happens because my 100% dominant focus is on you. So I wake up every day. What can I make for you? How can I help you move your business forward? Because my audience is my life, right? You really are my life. And that's on several levels. I got my YouTube audience, my blog audience, my email audience, a little bit inner circle. And then I got my paying customers inside of content and conversion.com, that inner circle membership. So there's levels of this. And that's, that's what my day is always focused on. And then I got a team of people. How is my entire team creating more value for our audiences on all six of our websites, you know, beyond these ones that you see here publicly. And that's really a big shift is really kind of getting out of the what's in it for me, what's in it for me, but how can I be of service? How can I be of service? It, it's, a, it's a magical thing. Things just start to click when we focus on being of service. And if you don't know who you can be of service to, if you know this digital marketing world and you get it right, you've been watching all the videos, you've been consuming, you're like, I understand how the game works. Start a local meetup group and just start teaching people. Just start showing up and, and sharing and asking questions and teaching keyword research and doing what, what you've learned for your local community because there's local business owners who would love to know what you know. And maybe that's your starting point. Maybe you just start a free hiking group if you're a fitness instructor and you want to help people get from being obese to being fit and that's your passion. That's what you want to do in the world. Start a free meetup group for, for a walking group or something right? What, it, what can you do for your community? And maybe that community is digital. Maybe that community like this is YouTube transcends time and space. This video is going to live on for years and years and years, and it'll reach people in Asia, in India, in, in South America, in Europe, all over the world, Africa, all over the world is where my audience is. Maybe you're playing that game, but maybe you're just becoming a star in your backyard. Either way, focus on your audience, and that is really, truly the key. Um, I'm going to recap it here. Hit the thumbs up if you've watched to this point. I really like to know when people make it to the end. That means you're one of the 1% who are committed to doing it. So feel free to comment 1% so I know who you are. I love knowing who makes it to the end. Uh, number one, who are you committed to becoming? It ain't about who you are right now. It's not what you are right now. It's about who you're committed to becoming. And then your life becomes a journey on that path. Number two, realize that that path is filled with failure. Successful people fail more than unsuccessful people. I've had more failed businesses than you would imagine. Going all the way back to when I was 12 years old. I'm telling you, it's a crazy string of failed businesses till I found one that worked. And in the one that worked, I found dozens, if not hundreds or thousands of things that did not work before finding the two or three things that work that I'm still doing to this day. So that path is filled with challenges. Number three, honesty and authentic authenticity build more trust. It's good for business when you're not the guru. I, I got everything figured out. Look how cool I am. No, I'm a normal person becoming the most helpful marketer in the world. And I'm going to share this journey with you. And it just draws people in. You probably experienced it viewing it from this angle. So how do you replicate that in your world is the big key. Number four, subconscious reprogramming. Listen to that meditation every single day. Download it from my podcast. Download it from here. Rip it off of YouTube. I don't care. Just, just consume that every day. It will help. And go through the Untethered Soul book. And number five, go all in on creating for your audience. I do believe that's why you're here on earth. I believe that's why I'm here on earth. I think every single human being has the potential to make this world a little bit better of a place. And when we stop thinking about our damn selves and we start thinking about who can we help, maybe it's volunteering at a soup kitchen. Cool. Maybe if that's what you're about, whatever it is about you're about, maybe it's coaching the little league team. Maybe it's being a YMCA, big brother, big sister. I don't know what that is. But when we focus on giving to others first and we really build our life on that, magic happens to us. I don't fully get how it works. Law of reciprocity, law of attraction whatever. It just works. That's just the way it is. And I guarantee you'll experience it too. If you've enjoyed this video, again, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. I appreciate you. You made it to the end. Good on you. And I'll see you on the next video. I do videos all the time. I'm happy to do them. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell. You'll get notified. Cheers. I'm out. Be well.